Hey, what's up, Earth? It's Spaceman Matt. Oh, I've just got back from a, a long furlough visiting my family for the holiday season, and all I came back with was a cold. So, uh, and this bottle of champagne. So, I'm going to drink a toast to the new year to you, but, uh, uh, but this episode is about the uh, second season of the uh, Orville, um, starting with Jaloja. The first uh, episode of the uh, second season of the Orville. Um, now, Jaloja, like New Year's, happens once a year. So I guess I could say Jaloja or Happy New Year. Mmm. Mmm. Tastes like Warhead soaked in uh, pickle brine juice. Uh, I think somebody replaced my champagne with uh, alien. Uh, P, but uh, which uh, ties in well with the uh, the uh, episode. Um, so Jaloja is the annual uh, ceremony that the uh, Mocklins have for when they urinate once a year. So apparently, uh, in the first season, they established that Mocklins urinate only once a year, and apparently, there's a ceremony involved in it. I was thinking, and this kind of is reminiscent of. Um, the uh, original stew series of Muck Time, uh, where Spock has to mate once every seven years. I mean, these kind of uh, uh, urges or habits are kind of inconvenient, or ceremonies in this case, are kind of inconvenient for somebody who has to live on a starship that's supposed to be exploring deep space. So they have to manage, maybe the quantum drive somehow transports them instantaneously from one place to another. So they don't have to worry about, you know, coming back from their deep space mission to visit somebody's home world. Um, so, uh, so it's the episode is is looks like it's going to be about Bordas, but it's really uh, it reintroduces you to all of the crew and uh, slight and gives you slices of life uh, on board the Orville. Uh, we see uh, Alara. Um, having relationship problems. Uh, we see, uh, which is uh, kind of carried over also from first season, uh, we see that uh, Ed Mercer and uh, Kelly Grayson are, I thought, kind of mended things up at the end of, uh, by the end of season one, but uh, still uh, Kelly Grayson is seeing other people and uh, another man. And um, so uh, their their relationship is still not the issues are still not resolved from the first season. Um, there's also uh, a story with uh, Doctor Finn and um, Isaac and uh, dealing with her uh, kids. Um, uh, getting involved with other big kids on board the ship. Uh, so, um, overall, yeah, a lot goes on. Not much happens in this episode. Um, they introduce another officer, uh, which may pr provide uh, some romantic attention for Ed, Mer uh, Ed Mercer and uh, the uh, helmsman, I forget his name, uh, who uh, are both kind of interested in this new officer and she was played by an actress who played a krill last season so I'm wondering if she's really a krill plant and I think there's a krill episode coming up soon so maybe we'll find that out in that episode overall I mean it was diverting so as in season one I think the Orville trying to f tries to fit in the Star Trek the next generation mold quite a bit um, uh, and I really wasn't, from the first season on, it really wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting more like, uh, Rick and Morty meets the family guy, or family guy in space. Maybe not quite as edgy, but still kind of more sitcom-y and less, more, less of a dramedy. It's really a lot like Star Trek with just, uh, like, instead of talking like they're from the future, they talk like they're from the 21st century, from modern times, and uh, not uh, 
and really not like uh, you know to start original Star Trek the original series and next gen at least tried to be uh, more um, timeless in the way they spoke and not make any pop culture references uh, to the 20th century which I think is a good idea for a science fiction show set in the future for our future really was at least I was expecting the Orville to be a little bit like uh, the British sitcom Red Dwarf, which I think is one of the few sitcoms that makes the science fiction and comedy work together. Uh, there was another uh, British sitcom called Hype Drive, which was a little more uneven, uh, but another interesting sitcom to check out. Some of the episodes are better than others, but in, and sometimes the comedy works and sometimes it doesn't in that series. But at least they tried. Um, I think uh, this uh, really is uh, Star Trek, the McFarlane iteration. Some people are calling it Seth Trek, which is a play on, his, on Seth McFarlane's first name. But I think uh, it, was the, it was Ed Mercer in the show, and he's the creator of the series um, and the creator of Family Guy. Um, so I think this is really Star Trek, uh, the McFarlane iteration, and uh, um, it it really wasn't what I was expecting. Um, I also have seen on YouTube. I haven't seen this verified in print anywhere, but I've seen on YouTube other YouTubers talking about um, the fact that uh, Seth McFarlane uh, may have. Uh, uh, wanted to produce a Star Trek and was uh, not offered uh, not offered the uh, rights to produce it. So um, he went uh, off into the Orville on his own with uh, Brandon Braga, who was a far former Star Trek producer himself. Um, and I'm going to talk about I'm going to do a separate episode where I talk about the first season of Star Trek Discovery. Uh, which uh, I think the fan reactions to both of these shows is kind of interesting. Uh, the fans seem to be more accepting of the Orville and not at all accepting of Star Trek Discovery. And I have theories as to why that is, but I'll, I'll cover that in another episode. In the meantime, I'm glad to be back. Uh, Happy New Year, and I'll hope to see you in, in future installments. Cheers. It does grow on you after a while. Oh, do you like my new tunic? It's, you're saying, well, is it, is it from the Oroville? Is it from Star Trek? Actually, it's from Kohl's, and it was on the sale rack. Isn't it terrific? All right. See you next time. Bye.